Hello guys and welcome to episode number 200 of the Next Gen Basecast. Uh, I am Ben and with me this week is Mr. Andy Beacon. How are you doing? Hello. I'm all right. It's a big number, isn't it? Yeah. 200? Yeah. We should Who have have thought it... we'd make it this far? Well, we should have hit it a long time ago, but, <laughs> but you know, things no and comment. stuff. Um, Thing, t things and stuff, I. Indeed. And I'm also joined by mr gary clark are you well my friend i am all good mate how are you yeah not bad not bad at the minute uh trying trying to shed a lose a bit of timber it's all it's all good it's all good i'm i'm, I'm craving and i'm sitting here and i'm sitting here swigging a beer at you so you know <laughs> yeah i mean i i have picked Sorry. i have very much picked the wrong time for a, a large gentleman to be trying to yeah shift a bit because as i pointed out in our group chat the other day the big tasty's back at mcdonald's and Oh, God mate. damn it. God. You do like a big tasty, don't you? They, they are good. They are good. They are good. They are good. So uh, mm. anyway, um, yep, yeah, it's the three of us this week. Um, we, uh, we we don't have a, well, Andy would be the rotating fourth chair, but uh, Aaron's not, uh, not available this week. So uh, we are down to a threesome, which, yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. Try another um, podcast. <laughs> down to a threesome. Um, so we'll start as always uh, with what we've been playing, and I'm going to start with Mr. Gary Clark. What have you been on with this week, my man? Oh, hello. Um, so I intended to play WWE 2K22, but I haven't actually played it yet because I have been going back on to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Okay. Um, so I originally played that when it came out on the PS4. Um, didn't get on with it at all. Um, I respected it for what it is. I love Star Wars. I just, for some reason, I just couldn't get on with it. Um, so I then thought, you know what? I'll give it another try. So I downloaded it on Game Pass and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I don't know why I'm loving it now compared to when I first played it. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it's a mindset thing. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I've been playing. I've put about f only about five hours in so far. Um, so yeah, downloaded that on Game Pass. There's, it's yeah, it's better than I originally thought. Um, I'm really excited for the second one now. Obviously, that's coming. Where, who knows? Um, soon. Yeah, I'll be, yeah, soon. Yeah, um, I've noticed a, a few weird issues on the Xbox though. Um, okay. I don't know if it's an Xbox and PlayStation thing. So. Right at the start of the game, there was some really bad audio syncing issues with like voices. It was like, you know, like sort of the really bad dubbed films from like the 80s and 90s. It yeah, was yeah, so a few bad. Milliseconds out. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one part where I went to a different planet and the planet was like just tearing with these like really sort of weird sort of blocks just floating about everywhere. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've noticed a few issues, but yeah. apart from that, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, it's it's good fun. The story is great. Um, I still want to find a BD one. I, that little dude is so cool. Um, <laughs> little droid, he's he's amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's yeah, I can't wait to play it later and see where it goes because at the moment I am yeah, I'm loving everything I'm playing about it. So um apart from that that is literally it um i haven't had much time to game recently um but i need to sit down and play wwe because nico's review which is live on the website now is the reason why i bought it so yeah i need to sit down and check that out as well yeah no it's a it's a solid review and i mean wwe is a solid game um i i'll be honest i'm kind of where you were with fallen order um I think at the time it came out, I had uh, EA or Origin All Access, mm. whatever it was, on PC. So I got the PC version. I was able to sort of crank it up. I was like, this looks beautiful. But I'm not going to play it. Like, it, it just didn't grab me. Um, mm. It's not a Ben game, is it? No, no. Um, Honestly, go back, go, go back to it and... Uh, you might be in the same boat as me. It's fantastic. Okay. It's really, you, really good. Do yeah. you think the uh, improved frame rate on the modern consoles has helped? Because I have to say, I went back and when I played uh, Sekiro the other year for our review on Stadia, 
and it manages to hit a 60 on that. It felt like a very different game to when I played it first on my PS4 at 30. Mm. It felt a lot more responsive, well, a lot smoother. And I do wonder if Fallen Order is falling into the same bracket because I found that to be a bit jank at times. Well, I'll be honest with you. I started, I started playing, and it wasn't until about two hours in, I thought, hang on, was there an update for this? So I went into the settings and realized I was playing on 30. Um, oh, okay. And then I, cha- I switched over to 60, and then, yeah, it does help a lot mm. because it's quite, like you say, I think the, cam- the way the camera works in it doesn't help it when it's at 30. It's quite sort of close, and at times it's quite sort of linear in places. Yeah. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I didn't even realize, like, there was an update until I went to the settings and noticed, yeah, lower resolution, higher frame rate. Yeah. So, yeah, as soon as I switched that over, it was, wow, yeah, here we go. This yeah. is better. So Yeah. I mean, that, that was... I think that was my thoughts. I mean, obviously, I say I played it on PC, so I was kind of, I was getting a lot of frames anyway. But then when I went back, well, I've, I've not been back to it, sorry, but like, kind of went back after a couple of patches, and I was like, mm, still not, still not grabbing me. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably give <clears> that, <throat> give that a go when I've got through uh, some of the stuff that I'm on with at the minute. Um, I know nice. one of mine and Andy's games is going to be the same, so I will come to Mister Beacon now. <laughs> what what have you been playing this week? Um, well, Benjamin, I have been playing the Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Is that one of your games as well? It is. Yeah. Well, let's have a chat about that together then. Um, I could have done that last and we could have segued into yours. So that's kind of what I was hoping you'd do. Let's bin that to the end of the discussion. (laughs) Ignore that I said that. Um, the smoothest of segues, courtesy of NGB. The smoothest (laughs) of segues. It's a preview. This is, that was the teaser trailer for the uh, segue. Um, so, ob- apart from the obvious, because um, I can't stop playing Elden Ring, because good lord. So every time I get a free moment, I just bang it on for like, you know, even if it's like 15 minutes to just go and mop up a tower or something like that. It's just, I can't stop playing that game. It's good. Game of the year, Benjamin. Eh, Calling it now. Maybe. Calling it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Me and Kieran will uh, will be uh, sacking it off if uh, if it doesn't get game of the year. Just be steamrolling it and like no, yeah, we will. <laughs> um, so apart from the obvious, um, I have also been playing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, mm-hmm. which we got in for review, which was very good. Very much enjoyed it. Um, I think I said it's going to be gaming marmite. You know, we've done a let's look at, which is on the site, which is on the YouTube channel now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know Johnny has some reservations about the whole Borderlands thing in general, but yeah, I quite like them. I quite, I think I I treat Borderlands in as as just like a sort of a chill out game. Mm. You know, it's never that challenging. It's just a kind of a stick it on, go and do some quests, go and find some loots and just kind of chillax with it a bit and tiny tina's kind of the same but it's it feels a bit tighter than the previous borderlands games i've played um a bit brighter um a bit kind of just it, it plays it a lot more sort of loosey it's not got that sort of edgelord sort of uh, mentality that's going on with with some of the others uh, at times it's just a bit it's silly it's a bit monty mm. python it's a bit daft um and mm. yeah I, I, I i've i've been really enjoying that um but the other one is ben do you know what i've been playing <laughs> is it lego star I've wars the skywalker saga? i've been playing lego star wars skywalker saga ben um have you been playing that one as well i have what i mean you obviously did the review yes um, we were fortunate enough to get codes at the same time so we've, we've sort of had mm-hmm. it um <laughs> a little bit before launch uh so we've been able to to get it all done and i think you've, yeah. you've kind of hammered through a lot of it and and got the review done yeah. um yeah. i've kind of taken a little bit of time with it but i'm, I'm chugging my way through the, the films at the moment um yeah but i mean like... so i i kind of bashed through a fair bit of it but i also I, I kind of um outsourced it a little bit to my kids as well to have a look at so we do not use child labor the... we do not use child labor they're my kids i can do what i I can can do what i want um quite frankly um but no i mean i'll be honest with you they've been looking forward to uh to this one for a while so i was quite happy to let them sort of have a go at it and and actually sort of take a back seat a little bit and watch like the target audience play the game and Mm. sort of see the experience through their eyes and uh yeah it's great it's it's 
I'm seeing some mixed reviews for it going out mm. that are saying, oh, it's a bit cluttered. It's got a lot. It's got a bit too much going on in it. And I, I guess so. But to that, I say, have you ever played a Lego game before? Because they generally mm. are a little bit sort of like chaotic. Mm. They are kind of chaos. But this one feels like the most polished bit of chaos that I think Traveller's Tales has made to date for the Lego franchise. Um, and it, it is really a celebration of Star Wars. And for that, I love it because it, it's got the good stuff. It's got the bad stuff. You know, it's got the stuff we'd rather forget about. It's got some silly little obscure references. I'm pretty sure there was a reference to the raid in it oh, at wow. the beginning of The Force Awakens. Because I don't know if you remember from the um, the film, the members of Kanji Club that board Han Solo's ship. Yeah. Um, when they let the Wrath mm. out. They are played by two of the actors from the raid. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and when the Kanji Club make their entrance, they're all sort of like doing sideways leaps with their guns and sort of swinging <laughs> off things. And I'm pretty sure that is a reference to the fact that in the film, they are played by the actors from the raid. That's so quite cool. I'm taking that one. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's such a silly game, but it just feels... A lot of the Lego games I've played in the past have felt like they've kind of been kicked out the door without a level of polish added to them you know mm -hmm. they got i think yeah. travelers tales got to a point where they were just getting license here license after license i think the, the a couple of the most egregious ones we played were um jurassic world yeah and um the hobbit both of which we actually found progress killing bugs in oh, um right. <laughs> jurassic world locked us into a, a level because i say us i'm talking about family we've always traditionally played lego games as as a family um jurassic world locked us into a level and the hobbit actually um dropped one of our characters into um like a void space in one of the levels and then auto saved oh cool that's always good and then we couldn't get that back so i don't wow. even think we could um, i don't even think we could hit the start menu so oh, it effectively geez. soft locked the game for us yeah so or hard locked <laughs> it rather so yeah so that was that was not a good one but yeah, I mean it's 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 been what twenty odd years, nearly that seventeen TT years. Been making these games, yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. Um, I rounded up a bit, um, but yeah, I mean you think this is going back to the PS2 era, um, and this kind of feels like you know to quote star wars the circle is now complete they started with lego star wars and we're now at the skywalker saga mm. you know this is the kind mm. of the the culmination of all those years of development and it's it's a good game it's really good fun it might not be for everyone there's a lot to do in it um but it's one of those games that you can just kind of again stick on and go and mooch about find some lego bricks um it's coming to switch as well be interested to see how it plays on switch is it out on Switch? Because it's I'd, coming out. Yeah. On Switch. I, I didn't know if it was day yeah. and day. I think it's already out. Um, I see someone. I see someone on Twitter yeah. that had it on the Switch. Oh, okay, cool. It must be then. Yeah. So. Uh, it, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. Sure, it's out. That's interesting. Review is on the site and on the YouTube, so do go and check it out. Indeed. Um, but yeah, my gaming. I, I have gaming. also been been playing through uh, the Skywalker Saga, and I I let out. The heartiest of laughs midway through playing um uh midway through playing uh the original Star Wars. That's the one. New Hope. I was trying I couldn't remember New the name. New Hope. Um yeah, when I was playing New Hope, um there is a bit in that that references uh, an old Eddie Izzard sketch. Um and I Lord Dar Lord Lord Sir Darth Vader. Yes, but like you know, have that you got one, a tray? Yeah. Like, oh no, we need to get to the canteen before we run out of trays. I thought it's just silly little references like that are yeah. just so yeah. good. And like, I think you can kind of tell that TT Games are a British developer yes. when you uh, yeah. see stuff like that. That's it's very yeah yeah. Um, but yeah, so there, there was that like with the um, I say with with the, the the tray thing, and then just so many little really subtle like nods and winks to camera and stuff like that i just i loved it yeah. i thought it was brilliant um mm. kind of retells the story uh of the star wars saga with you know loads of affection you can tell they've got so much love for the franchise um and mm. like everything in it is is kind of in its place um i think if there was a 
criticism I'd have to make of it is that the the movies do feel a little bit rushed. They do feel very very quick. Um, particularly, mm. um, I found Return of the Jedi to be very kind of okay. You're here now. You're here now. You're here now. You're here, you're here, you know, it was mm. sort of. It, it I didn't think that's have... a trap. That... Yeah, that's a trap they've fallen into in the past with some of their previous licensed stuff, though. I remember playing, um, I think it was Lord of the Rings, and there were some parts of Lord of the Rings that just go, they go too quick over. And there's some parts that they drag out a little bit longer than they should be dragged yeah. out. But I mean, like, um, what one thing to be sort of clear on with that is that, excuse me, yes, the you know they, they do kind of go quite quickly if you just kind of blitz through the story. But mm. you've got these like open hub worlds when you like if you go to like Bespin in Empire, Bespin is it, it's the whole city. Like you can walk around it, you can go into different buildings, you can go into different areas, like the whole thing is just massive. So if you want to get everything, if you want the platinum trophy in this, it's gonna take you forever. Jeez. There is a lot of stuff to do. There is a lot of stuff. I mean, I thought that the whole big open world map of Middle Earth in the Lego Lord of the Rings was big. Mm. I mean, one of the this trophies... This is like lots of those. <laughs> yeah, one of the trophies is to get 18 billion studs with a B. Oh. Wow. So, is that cumulative? Yes. That's not in your pocket. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's sort of throughout the whole game. <laughs> But um, mm. yeah, to collect eighteen yeah. billion studs, I'm sure it's billion. Like, I'm, I, I'm, I was probably is. Yeah, I was checking yeah. it. I counted the zeros. I'm like, that's nine zeros. But anyway, yeah, that's I've been a lot of studs. Yeah, I, as I say, I've been enjoying. Um, I've been enjoying Lego Lord of the Rings. Lego Lord of the Rings. Lego Star, Star Wars. Wars. Sorry, you know, I was getting in my head. <laughs> bloody Lord of the Rings. Um, and alongside do, do, that, do, 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 do. sorry, what? I don't know. I I still haven't seen all three films, and someone's probably going to kill me for that. Probably Andy's going to kill me for that. It's I've just... seen them. Right. I, I didn't really enjoy them, but <coughs> it's just fucking walking, isn't it? <laughs> Long walking as well. Yeah. Anyway, um... walking and it's walking and fighting and walking. Anyway, different conversation. We're different. <laughs> Carry on, Benjamin. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to think of other stuff that I've played. Um, I I've we got a code through for, um. MLB the show 2022 um on PS5 so I've been playing a little bit of that. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I I don't follow <laughs> baseball. I just press the buttons and hit the ball. It's essentially American cricket. Yeah. Yeah, only with more beer by the sounds of it. More this, beer this and more food. This is a spoiler for the next LLA, but um, in a, in the, the the baseball that you're playing, can you throw the ball at people's heads? You you can, but it doesn't <laughs> knock <Okay>. them out. <laughs> for those you have to tune in next week. Yeah, but let's but, look at to find out what we're talking about. For those that are curious, check out next week's um, "Let's Look at" on YouTube because uh, <laughs> there's a moment in that where, like, I think it was Super Mega Baseball. Johnny 3. goes rogue. Yeah, Johnny we, goes we're, rogue. We're playing Super Mega Baseball Three, and it's like. <laughs> This is all right. It's a cartoony baseball game, and then something happens, and everyone just goes, "Oh no, this is brilliant!" Um, so <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's good. But like, yeah, I mean, MLB, <laughs> it, it it always does kind of the same thing where it like shows off how shiny things can get now, and sort of about it. Like, I I don't know. We'll we'll come to a, another sports game in a little bit, but like the I don't know what to look out for in an MLB game. Like I don't know mm. what mechanics need to change and stuff like that. You know, it's not it's not my wheelhouse. So we won't have a review up of that. But I'm I'm going to try and get some content done. Um, yeah, for it at some point. So that's about it. Um, Played a bit of Returnal, didn't you? Oh yes, I did. Thank you, Returnal. That was mm. the other thing I've been playing. Um, Yes, it, it's not forgettable um, in that it's bad, but I've just had a lot else on. Um, but yeah, I, I checked out the uh, the Tower of Sisyphus mode and uh, also the co-op campaign uh, is live. I haven't haven't played much of that because um, I, I just didn't have time to do both, but I, I played the Tower mode. That is a th that's a thing like that is genuinely like apparently it's completely endless 
So Jeez. you get how high did you get in the end? Because I, I kind of, I was watching your stream, but I, I had to go off and do something else. Did you watch the point at which it crashed? No, I didn't get. Yeah, that I far. did. I was not happy. So I got quite far. I, I got probably three because you, you go in cycles. So basically, at the end of twenty rooms, you get a boss, um, and then you go through another right. twenty rooms. You get the same boss, but with more health. Um, and then another 20 rooms, same boss, more health. And it kind of just keeps going like that. Yeah. Um, and I think I got into like the third run of it um, and then the game crashed. So I started again uh, and got to the third boss and died. So, uh, yeah, but like some of the scores are ridiculous. Like, I, I checked out the scoreboard. After oh, that, one, that one at the top was like, <laughs> it was so far in front of everyone else. It's yeah. like, yep absolutely crazy there's like it it's hundreds of millions um and was I was it like, like 125 million or something he was on or something? something like that absolutely crazy and i'm sat there with my three and a half four million and i'm like yay um it's like it's like when i happens. um when i think oh i'm doing all right at like a souls game and i see a youtube video of someone doing like a no hit run in their pants in five minutes. with no weapons and i'm like <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just, yeah, done with video games, mate. I'm <laughs> done with video games now. Um, <laughs> video games have been completed. Pretty much. But I mean, yeah, like it, it's it's Returnal. It's great fun. Um, it is absolutely manic. Um, and more people should play that game because it's 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 a special game uh, from Housemark. And uh, that's pretty much all I've been playing. But... I say more people should play Returnal, and segue. Um, more people can I set that play one up it for you, mate, because you forgot about it. <laughs> more people, Give me credit. More people will hopefully be able to play it soon, um, because obviously we didn't have a podcast last week, but it was, this was the main thing we were going to talk about last week, um, and we may. I thought we may as well kind of carry it forward because there's not been a huge amount this week that's gone on, um, but. PlayStation have changed or will be changing PlayStation Plus going forward. Um, it now consists of three tiers. You have Essential, Extra, and Premium. Um, the Essential is the same price as it currently is. Uh, extra is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Where are we? Extra is uh, 10 99 a month. And uh, PS Plus... Is, uh, Premium, sorry, is thirteen pounds forty nine a month. So with extra, you get an additional three hundred and forty games on top of your PS Plus collection um, that are available to to download whenever you like. So it's kind of just a, an extended library, and then they come with um, they they are all PS Four and PS Five games. So PS Plus Premium comes with all of the stuff from extra and it also includes uh sorry the 400 games 400 downloadable games on ps plus extra ps plus premium adds an additional 340 on top of that so in theory it's 740 games 700 yeah if you go with the premium tier so the premium tier 740 games that includes PS3 titles, PS2 titles, PS1 titles, and PSP titles. But the PS3 titles are only available to stream. And basically, I don't know why I'm holding a pencil. <laughs> uh, and basically, yeah, that that kind of um, uh, the, the the main difference between the the extra and the premium tiers is that premium has 340 more games, which are a cross between downloadable and streamable. And uh, premium also offers uh, limited time trials, which I am I'm unsure about that. But we'll we'll come on to it. I mean, you know, it it's a it's an interesting development. I don't think anybody was expecting it to go to sort of blow Game Pass out of the water, but um, they definitely haven't done that because obviously the big discussion at the moment is still day one titles so gary your thoughts on the new ps plus and uh, are you going to be jumping in um so it's 
it's what I expected, really, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people were expecting Sony to go down the whole Game Pass route. Never going to happen. Sony have said in the past that they won't put first-party games on a service because essentially they make so much money from it. Mm-hmm. Um, so people are expecting, like, God of War Ragnarok and Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine, those sort of games, it's not going to happen. Um, obviously, you've got the likes of Spider-Man, Miles Morales, that sort of stuff, which is a bit older, um, Death Stranding, etc. Um, <coughs> I'm still un- I'm still unsure whether... I- what I think I might do, I think I'd try it for a month and see how it is. Mm-hmm. Because the issue I have with these sort of services is... Everyone wants the old games, but when you have them, you don't play them, Um, which is something that I sort of have with Game Pass. I see Game Pass, don't get me wrong, Game Pass is incredible, but there is a slight but to it. The fact that sometimes you go to the Game Pass library and you go, well, that's old, that's old, that's old, don't want to play that, don't want to play that, that's old, that's old, that's old. And you sort of, if you actually sat down and, look to all of the games on game pass that you actually want to play it's pretty low i think um so there is that issue um but yeah like i say i think i will try it for a month just to see how it is if it's something that i don't enjoy i can cancel it um but yeah the one thing i don't like about it is the fact that the older titles we've talked about this in our chat the older titles are behind a paywall i think that's a bit of a bad move from sony to be honest so yeah no i I agree with you on that i mean my thoughts on that are are pretty much the same as you like i if you're going to allow ps1 ps2 um games to run (laughs) you're proving that the system can do it so at that point can you not just open it up like open let up, everyone yeah, experience it you know like open up the facility yeah. for everybody to do it i mean it doesn't have to be a downloadable title for you to do that you know if, if, if a mm. game gets in you know if a game gets put into a system even if it let you install it like if it did what the xbox does or as you know the xbox you put a disc in and it downloads a an xbox does, yeah. series version yeah, essentially it download mm. it downloads the version that you would buy if you were to buy it off the digital shop that's it yeah but it's tied to the disc for authentication so yes. you can't like yeah <laughs> sneak your copy of the best burnout on xbox in your mate's console download it and then they can play it well paradise that's is, revenge by the way paradise revenge. is uh, paradise is fine it's, it's available on game pass um anyway <laughs> but no i mean like yeah i i think the i think the sort of the limitation of of any um any old games sort of tied to a paywall i think is a bit a bit of a misstep um yeah i mean andy as our resident retro man what are your sex mold <laughs> no you do ngb retro i am old i know i'm old as well. um, <laughs> are you intrigued by this and will you be you know will you be subscribing to the higher tier so you can do a few more ngb retro vids i might if i want to do some retro videos but to be honest with you i i i get what okay so going back to what gary was saying about game pass i, I kind of get what you're saying about sort of like the older titles being on there but for me the draw of game pass and the justification for me to actually spend money on it is those day and day releases mm-hmm. and yeah. not just like the big titles but the smaller titles, there's been a bunch of retro, uh, sorry, a bunch of indie titles uh, hit this year, like Infinax and uh, Nobody Saves the World and um, and a couple of others, I think um, Young Souls as well, that have been like, I'd wanted to play those. I want to play those games. Um, The fact that they come to Game Pass is a bonus for me because it means that I can grab them on the launch day. And if I play enough games throughout a year, I can justify my monthly fee to to game pass um because it's like well i would have spent that money anyway so it's just gone out in installments rather than in one go with this playstation plus i don't know i don't know what the incentive for me there is because it's a big library yes but is it going to be games i want to play i don't know for a lot of those older games it would probably be cheaper for me to find a second-hand copy of them 
or pick it up in a sale or something like that. Um, and for the retro games, I... that's a bit shit. Sorry, I don't like it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I like the fact that I can get, you know, I can go to my shelf, <laughs> I can get Panzer Dragoon for my Xbox, I can stick it in my Xbox, and I can play it. And <clears throat> games that I've had on my Xbox account for years, yeah. I can just download them and I can play them. I can't do that with PlayStation um, Plus. I can't even, you know, the games that I've got on my PS3 account, I can't even stream them. They've not given yeah. me an option to even go and say, okay, well, here you go. You can just buy the games that you want to play. They're saying, 15 quid a month, mate. It's all you can eat. But, yeah, but I just want to eat that, mm. mate. Yeah, but it's all you can eat. I just want to eat that. Mm. I think... Sorry, I think rant. The, the, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> I think the more time that has passed since this announcement the more I'm kind of going, well, the technology is there now. Like, mm. PS1 and PS2. Mm. I I can't see a reason besides money for, for holding this back. Like, yeah. you know, install, like, put the disc in, install it as a package. Like, even if it is a yeah. case of, like, even if it's a case of ripping the entire disc, it's what, a, a PlayStation 1 game is going to be a maximum of like yeah. 700 meg. So mm. rip it, well, put it on the system, and then play it off an ISO. You know, that's kind of how that's, that's how emulators work. Well, it's exactly how... It's interesting you said that, because there's a console that's recently come out called the... Is it the Polymega? Yes. Polymega Studio. Yeah. Which has... It's one of those modular things, so you buy, like, cartridge slots to go on it for your older games. Yeah. But it comes... The base unit has a, a disk drive in it to play PlayStation 1, um, Saturn, and Dreamcast and stuff. And I was watching um, a guy on YouTube do a review of it, and he said, basically, all it's doing, from what he can tell, because he ejected a disk to prove this, is it's taking the disk, and it's doing what you said. It's ripping an ISO of the disk to the uh, guts of the console. It's encoding it in such a way that you can't take it off the console to do anything else with. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's 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 doing that. Yeah, I, I just don't... I think it's a big mistake that... I think they'll get people mm. buy up for it, but I mean, they'll I'm... be doing it for that. Oh, I had a PlayStation 1 when I was younger. Yeah. I'm going to go and play some Spyro the Dragon. I mean, I've kind of got to the point now where I'm like, I'm I'm pretty much convinced myself that I'm going to sign up for this because I'm already all in, and like you know, I've I've got Game Pass. If I get hold of this, like you know, any of the sort of newer games that we'll be mm. releasing and we'll we'll have some coverage for, like we will probably get a code for. But if there's a game that I missed, you know, six months mm. a year later. It will mm. probably be on this service or on Game Pass or something. So mm. I'm happy to pay the extra few quid for PS Plus. I mean, I think I've got two years of PS Plus anyway left. So, you know, I'm happy to pay that. But yeah, it's I'm probably part of the problem to, at that point. <laughs> to me, it yeah. seems like Sony sort of worked everything out and then went, oh shit, we need something to add to the premium side of it yeah. because it just doesn't sound like good value. So oh, I know what we could do. Let's add these classic games behind or our retro games behind a paywall. That's what it feels like. I don't know if that is what happened. Do you, um, do you know what it's like? It's like Microsoft have got Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate. Sony have gone, well, we've got PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Plus Extra and PlayStation Plus premium mm. and it's like spinal tap isn't it it's one better it's one up in yeah but it's but it's one better playstation plus goes to 11 mm. yeah <laughs> um yeah yeah i mean you know the, the the whole thing about it not including the day one releases you can I, you could see that coming a mile off um mm. so if you get hold of this you won't be getting like gary said you're not going to be getting god of war ragnarok you're not going to be getting spider-man 2 on launch but Judging by the list of games that are coming to it at the moment, it seems like there might be a sort of year-long window. Yeah, I reckon so. 
probably 18 months at the most, I reckon. Yeah, because, I mean... So you... Yeah, go on, Andy. I was going to say, from the naming of it, you'd almost have thought the premium would be that tier where you get those day one yeah. releases. Premium should be that, oh, yeah, you go premium, you get God of War when it's released, baby. Mm. You're in the premium tier. Yeah, but, uh... I, I guess. I mean, I, I think... I mean, Jim Ryan came out with an interview which basically said, look, at the moment, we're not planning on doing this. We'll see how it works out. We'll see what the market says mm. and all the rest of it. So if enough people kick off, then I imagine yeah. they will probably rethink it or something. I, no. I think if Game Pass wasn't a thing, I think Sony might have done it because like, if they do it now and say, right, all these new games are included, but it's £30 a month. It mm. makes the PlayStation side of it look mm. far too expensive compared to yeah. Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because Game Pass is already established at that cheap price. I think that they probably think, well, like, what do we do here? Do we do it or not? I, I think if Game Pass wasn't a thing, they potentially would mm. do it. Um, yeah. It's I an interesting one. Incentivizing it enough, you know. It's like it's like fifteen quid a month, and you get to play Bishy Bashy Special. Even Nintendo is saying yeah. for their. Um, uh, for their premium tier, you get the Mario Kart content and the Animal Crossing content, and yeah, true. It just I, it I feel that's a lot bit... of content as well. Yeah, it is a lot of content. I, I think I think the thing for this is you know we'll we'll obviously head on to some of the stories in a second, but like stop me ranting. <laughs> I I just think that you know the headline of four hundred games is kind of bigger than microsoft's headline of 100 games yeah so for the extra tier you're probably looking you might be looking at a, a better value you know for want of a better phrase mm. and then you throw in <coughs> an additional 340 so over 700 games mm. in the premium tier that you have access to but if you are just me, a playstation player it's good value yes I think for me, the value is going to be seen when they announce what the library is. Yeah. Because until that point, yeah, you know, they could say, oh, 700 games. It's like, you've got ISS Pro, you've got ISS Pro Evolution, you've got Pro Evolution 2, you've got PES 3, you've got PES 4, PES 5, PES 6, and then you can go all the way up to 2022. And that would count for what, 10, 12, 15 yeah. games? So is mm. that is that what they're going to do, or are they going to have the most recent one of a like a series? Yeah, and, I, don't I know, think it's going to be very curated. Yeah. I'd, I'd hope so. What are they? What are they not going to have? Is the other question because obviously EA is on Game Pass. Mm -hmm. EA Play is on Game Pass. Will EA be putting their games on PlayStation Plus Extra Premium? Well, it's. Oh, I think they not? in that same Activision Blizzard. Well, that that's the big question, obviously Activision yeah. and Bethesda. Um, but there was the question asked um, again of Jim Ryan, and he has come round and said, or oh, sorry, sorry, Sony. Uh, yeah, sorry, it was Jim Ryan that said it. Um, every major publisher will support the new PS Plus games library. Okay. So. Okay. Mm. Every major publisher. So that's seven hundred. Like games. you said, though, oh, Nintendo. Well, they're going to get. <laughs> Don't be. Are we going to get like, Sim, Sims Two, Sims Such and Such, Sims Three, Sims Blah Blah Blah, Sims? Yeah. Like, really. I mean, that's that's the um, big query for me. Is like you know, will they will they turn around and say, look, every game in in a an annual franchise is now available. Um, because if they, you know, like I said, if they turn around and say Pez and FIFA are available, and they won't have curated those, you're probably looking at what twenty five, four, thirty games on the FIFA side, and then another fifteen, twenty five on the Pez side. Mm. At which point mm. you're talking nearly a hundred, which is nearly a seventh of those games are suddenly old football games. It's like, well, yeah, but. Will it I don't think they will do library? that. No, they, they, will they it be won't. like going into CX? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it'd be like going into CX, but without the smell. 
<laughs> that sounds brilliant. If that helped the smell. Yeah. I mean, let, I will be perfectly clear, right? <clears throat> if they put Pez 6 in that premium tier as a downloadable game for PS5, I am signing up on day one. They won't. I know. <laughs> that makes me sad. It's not well. I don't think it's a Sony thing. I think it's more of a Konami thing. Definitely let's be is. honest. Definitely is. But um, yeah, I think that's probably a good spot to uh, to wrap up on the PlayStation Plus stuff. So it's um, going to be an interesting one. I think it, they've said it's launching in, what, a couple of months? So they're going to share more details closer to launch. I hope that includes the library, because otherwise, like the ultimate mystery box, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the ultimate it's mystery. Like, yeah, um, yeah, pay fifteen it's pounds. Like Pokemon cards. Yeah, and pay fifteen pounds, get seven hundred games, but we're not going to tell you what they are. Are they? Are they? Are they oh. going to each be in like a gacha gacha pond? So you have to open <laughs> each one to figure, find out what it is. Yes, yeah, it's, it's one a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> new games dropped. Oh dear. So. <laughs> Um, What's right. the next news article, Ben? Next stories are about the PlayStation Plus, conveniently, and the uh, the Game Pass games for the month. So there were, I think this got leaked a couple of weeks ago on the PlayStation side. Um, you've got Hood, Outlaws and Legends, Slay the Spire and SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Now, Slay the Spire is an excellent game, but I have it on a million other platforms. Well, there we go. I might, I might try. Is it an Andy game? It's a roguelike card game. It's an Andy game. Um, it's a bit of an Andy game, but it's good fun. Yeah. I've got it on Switch, and I've got it on Android as well for my phone, so I can play okay. it when I'm on the go. Apparently, it's very good. Apparently, the SpongeBob remake is uh, is actually surprisingly good. Is it? Um, and Hood Outlaws and Legends sounds like it could be interesting as well. So maybe we'll okay. check those out. Um, anything there that's taking your fancy, Gary? No, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, it's pretty. It's a pretty weak one for me. Um, I I can't actually remember the last time I downloaded a game from PlayStation Plus. To be honest, I mean, I I add them to my library, and then at some point I'll just go through. I them. always forget. Yeah, I I wish it did it automatically. Um, yes. Mm. Yes, but. I mean, I think if it, if you could set it to do it automatically, then every game that came to the system would immediately sell twenty six million units or whatever it is they've. <laughs> you know. Do they count those as sales then when people add them to their library? I imagine somebody will for dick swinging reasons. Oh god. Yeah. Um, but then um, on the other side, on on Team Green, if you're going to be that way, um, they announced some more games coming to Game Pass. Um, you've got. Coming to the cloud, we have Dragon Age 2, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, and Star Wars Squadrons. Um, and then coming to cloud and console, so brand new on the console, we've got, uh, conveniently together, uh, Cricket 2022 and MLB The Show 22. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's like two versions of Cricket, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Um, Essentially, yeah. yeah. So then, from then, we have uh, Chinatown Detective Agency coming to cloud console and PC, and Life is Strange. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Life is Strange: True Colors and Lost in Random also coming to cloud console and PC mm. with Panzer Core Two and another game that I am not going to touch with a barge pole when it comes to that title. The Dungeon of Nalabuk? Nah. Nah. Yeah. Nah, 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 there you go. Did they fall asleep when they were uh, typing that title? <laughs> Anything on there that, uh, that, that tickles you? Um, I'll start with Gary. Oh, there's, there's a few, actually. Um, Star Wars Squadrons. I never played that. Um, Good. And as, okay. I'm, as I'm into the, the Star Wars at the moment, as you can see behind me, I'm sort of well up for playing that. Um, the other two are Life is Strange, True Colors, which I loved the original Life mm -hmm. is Strange. Um, was was close to picking this up on PS5 not long ago and then decided not to, so I'm, in a way I'm glad I didn't. Very much the and same. And the other one is, uh, um, what was the other one? I'm just looking now. Chinatown Detective Agency, which looks very cool. Yeah. 
uh, I know you you are interested in that as well, Ben. Right? Yeah, it's kind of it's it's got a weird like point and clicky vibe to it. I'm I'm digging mm. it. It looks quite cool. Um, I'll probably pick that up on PC um, and, and give that a go. Um, but yeah, if you're up for playing some squadrons, I think it's it's currently available to download um, as part of EA Play. Uh, this is just for the for the cloud. So if you're up for some squadrons, uh, then hit me up and we'll we'll fly some excellent together. Yeah, um, that sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. What about Mr. Beacon? I'm guessing MLB The Show is high up on your list. Yeah, yeah that's that's really the one that I want to play. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've played Squadrons. Uh, Garden Warfare is more for my kids. I tried to play the Dragon Age game in the past, but I just couldn't get into the Dragon Age games. I, it's like a lot of Bioware's um, RPG stuff. I never really... It's never twigged me, like Mass Effect as well. Um, so, yeah... Um, I feel like I should play Life is Strange, but I've never played any of the f- original games, so oh, coming into this one, one would probably be a bad idea. I've got them amazing. on multiple things. I need to play them. Lost in Random looks intriguing. Um, I've been having a quick look at it. It's an EA um, Originals title that came out last year. It's the Dicey game. And it looks it? like a... It is. It looks mm-hmm. like a sort of a, ni- a neat little sort of almost... Sort of visually almost like a psychonaut style mm. sort of um game but yeah so it's uh what does it say it says uh a dark kingdom where every citizen's future is determined <coughs> by the roll of a dice and i think it looks like a story driven action adventure so uh yeah it looks like it could be quite intriguing uh, a bit whimsical Ooh. whimsy whimsy J- johnny would love it because it looks whimsical <laughs> and he loves a good whimsy doesn't he indeed You're going to hate johnny. me i'm going to get lots of sour messages from no. jonathan um so that's that's that one the game pass ps plus games uh, all your free games get hold of them while you can um and sad news this week in some respects it's kind of yeah end of an era in one area but um the other thing that happened this week um is the e3 officially got cancelled for the second year in a row um the Mm -hmm. digital event is no more physical event had already been cancelled did they see did they finally succumb to the simpsons gift the stop stop he's already dead (laughs) i mean they finally go actually do probably right we think do we think that they will come back and make a play for 2023 in person or indeed online gary i say no but you just don't know what the esa the esa are the reason why this has happened they just didn't didn't know how to evolve they didn't know how to sort of go with the times um and this is i expected this because Let's be honest, the big sort of publishers, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, they're all doing their own thing. They don't need that space in Los Angeles. Yeah. They they it's they can do it from any office anywhere. It's all pre recorded. Um Yeah, they just the ESA have absolutely screwed over E three for not just this year, for the last few years at least. Um so when this sort of got announced, I was a bit like I really sort of didn't expect anything else because the time is moving on and nothing was sort of said about it. So it was obvious something behind the scenes was happening in regards to cancellations and stuff like that. So I'm not surprised at all. And yeah, I don't think it's coming back. If it is, they will have to change drastically to sort of go with the times, as I said, um, because it can't come back as it is. The price of some of those booths inside, like the convention center, are just ridiculous. Yeah. And that's without obviously logistical staff and yeah, staff and yeah, it's crazy. So unless something changes, it's not coming back. It it, it will never come back in its original form anyway. I don't think. I mean, Andy, you, you I think me and Gary are probably going to go off on a bit of a uh, a, a, a wistful. Mem- like memorial in a, in a few seconds and but, memory lane yeah but um <laughs> i mean as as somebody that kind of always viewed e3 from uh, from from the Afar. safety of your own home um how you know how did you see it did, did this was fairly obviously coming wasn't it i mean with the 
all of the, yeah. the screw ups that they've made, like they, they leaked a bunch of well, they leaked everybody, every single member of press that went to E three twenty. Yeah, that was that was nineteen. That was a fun bit of GDPR yeah. chaos, wasn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, what what are your thoughts on on this, and and where does it I go? Think, I think Gary's right. I think E three was always less about the event and more about the announcements. I think it turned into a new game news week. And I think the publishers throughout sort of like the pandemic and even before then, you know, I mean, you had people breaking away like Nintendo to do the directs um, before then said, yeah, it is new game announcements week, but we don't need E3 to do that because we've got the Internet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it kind of became like that. You know, I mean, obviously we've got EGX in this country, but EGX is very much more a uh, um, come on, members of the public, get your hands on these video games mm. kind of uh, thing. Whereas E3 is more like, here's the video games you're going to get your hands on. Mm. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, it always seemed like a funny one. You know, it was always nice when there was the in-person events. You know, I still remember like the the times when you know you'd have like the big announcements and you'd see you'd have that audience reaction. And I miss stuff like that. I miss watching, you know, a live stream and having that sort of that, that yeah feeling the hairs on the back of your neck stand up when they announced twilight princess and stuff like that that sort of that moment of, oh oh they've done it oh it's coming yeah um and i think that's kind of less to a, a point where you know it's you sat in your pants watching it on your ipad um but you know we have that sort of shared moment as well we we we, we did the um we used to do like the live streams, didn't we, of the uh, of the events um, as yeah. they came out. Obviously, before we could, uh, before we had to stop seeing each other in person. So you know, it will be nice to sort of be able to do that again. But I think, and it's an in person event. The writing's been on the wall for quite a while for it. Yeah, which is a shame because it's a bit mm. of an institution, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing. Like, it was always the event that everybody wanted to go to. And you know, E3 yeah. was the thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm realised that I'm very privileged in the fact that I've been able to go twice. I know Gary, you've been multiple times as yeah. well. Same. Um, I mean, it's it's just it's kind of a bit weird to know that that's not the aspiration anymore. Like, obviously, Gamescom's still going to be a thing. Um, I'm still debating whether I'm potentially going to be heading out there this year for that, but it, it, that's going to be the one now isn't it that's going to be everyone's going oh yeah let's go game yeah. because obviously summer games fest is still happening that jeff Keeley's doing but that's exclusively online so mm. i don't know i mean we will we'll sort of tie this up um with with uh with sort of e3 memories i mean gary what what is your overriding oh, like your peak e3 memory oh that's a tough one um so there's a couple I remember. So the God of War announcement, that Hell was one. Yeah. Where they had like the full orchestra it was incredible. Yeah. Um, that was one. And the other one would be Spider Man announcement when we yeah. was in the Sony conference. Like I sort of like made this weird sort of high pitched noise when it when it came up. Um Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Uh yeah, I think those two are my standouts. I'm sure once you say, if they're different to mine, I'm probably going, ah, oh, shit, yeah, that one as well. Um, yeah, those two are definitely my because they they were the ones that come to my yeah come to me straight away. So yeah, those two for sure. Yeah, I mean it's interesting because you, you the two that you mentioned are obviously both from the press conferences, and I think when they opened it up to the public, a a large number of people was suddenly very disappointed that they couldn't go to the press conferences and it's like mm. yeah that that's not what e3 is like e3 is, is <laughs> no. the event everything else is before e3 um yeah but yeah like again i've we went to the, the two times i've been we went to the first year we went to the microsoft ea and sony press conferences mm. and then the second year that i went we went to the microsoft and Sony presses. I don't think I did another another one. I was I, I was really annoyed because I was invited to the Bethesda one the second time I went. And that was when your flight 
my flight got delayed by five Ooh, hours. Right, yeah. <coughs> and I missed the Didn't... Bethesda conference. And the thing Is that, that the really... way we missed Blink 182? Yes, the thing that really annoyed me about it was that oh. just very casually, like in the email that I had in the week to say, oh, by the way, these are the details of the press conference. Like it said, this is your invite. This is where it is. This is the time it's at. Um, we hope you can stay for the after party. Uh, doors open here, open bar. Blink-182 hit the stage at nine o'clock. I'm like, sorry, what? Like one of my favorite bands of all time who had just at that point been, uh, they just appointed Matt Skiba as a singer who was the lead singer in one of my other favorite bands of all time. Um, and I was like, I, I can't miss this. I cannot miss this. And I was sat on the frigging tarmac. At, yeah, sat on the tarmac at Gatwick, just slowly boiling myself with my own rage because it was going nowhere. And they closed the air. Like the headline on BBC News on my phone was Gatwick Airport closed due to holes in runway. And I'm sitting on the runway in a plane at Gatwick. I'm like, what the fuck? But no, the, and the, the person sat next to you is messaging his missus saying, a bit annoyed about the delay, but good lord, the guy next to me is taking it really badly. <laughs> yeah. but, a bit worried about him. <laughs> He's punching the seat in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, yeah, so I, I think positive memories. Let's think positive memories. Um, the, the ones for me, um, I mean, that 2016 Sony conference was something else. Like it, right. it absolutely was. Like I think we got, uh, we had a little bit too much to drink before we went in, mm. and mm. I I vividly remember like regretting having drunk that much quite quickly because I was like, oh, I need to break the seal, and I I went to the loo as they were unveiling Days Gone, and I got back yeah. and I sat down in the chair and I just went <laughs> leant over to Gary and went, is this the last of us too? <laughs> and he was like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, oh, no, that, that that 2016 conference was incredible. I think that was the one with yeah, uh, they say God of War, so uh, Spider Man, Crash, uh, Death Stranding got revealed, wow. Resident Evil Seven, like that conference was phenomenal. Um, but the other one that I went to was 2014, and I think the the moment from that one, <laughs> and I'm sure you'll remember this as soon as I say it, Gary. Is when they announced yeah. um, when they announced uh, Grim Fandango remastered. Mm. I went the, the noise, but, um, yeah. Again, ben I was like, a single person in. in the audience just whooping and hollering. <laughs> I, I think we'd had a few again, and it was like it was so unexpected, completely out of left field. Um, and then at the end of it, we met uh, we met Shuri Shida, which was quite nice. Um, but like on a on a personal note from the show, like just randomly running between appointments and then sort of turning the corner and seeing uh five of the guys from giant bomb four or five of the guys mm. from giant bomb i just kind of you know that scene in terminator 2 when arnie shows up as she's running away and she like hits the and floor and slides like, yeah. like it was almost like that because i was just like these are the people that inspired me to get into this whole thing like they they were yeah. the reason that i started doing this and like kind of Seeing them walk into an appointment, I was just like, oh, "You're just Jeff and Patrick and the bra." <laughs> um, yeah, proper fanboyed out, but uh, they were also on their way to an appointment, so I got a very quick photo um, and and moved on. But yeah, that was defining moment for me. Um, uh, E three, so like, sorry, did somebody? Oh, sorry, I thought. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say. Um, so like, yeah, E three over the years, like. We spoke about it being a bit of a disappointment with the ESA and stuff like that. But those memories I have of like going to E3 were incredible. Just meeting everyone, just yeah. in the middle of like the biggest gaming show in the world. You can't get, you can't take those memories away, and it's it's a shame that E3 has gone the way it has because it was it was a special event. Um, and it looks like it's going to be no more. I think North America needs a show like Gamescom. I mean, how got, they go about packs, it. haven't they? Packs, they yeah. have, but the trouble with packs, it's not fully dedicated to video games. It's sort of like a mishmash of comics and movies, and so mm. I don't know. Maybe 
maybe they could do a Gamescom US, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's a shame that if it doesn't come back, but those memories will always sort of stay in my brain because yeah, we had some good times in LA when we went, so. Yeah, seeing Hip Hop Gamer at our hotel after he was bigging himself up on Twitter, it's like, mate, you're in the same hotel as us and it costs like $50 a night or whatever and I'm fairly yeah. certain they weren't fireworks outside last night. But anyway, <laughs> um, right, so we'll move on to a couple of smaller Jesus. stories. Um, one of these, I'm fairly certain that um, if I can get um if i can get gary and nico on next week we'll probably go into this in a little bit more uh more detail because eFootball version 1.0 is coming and it's coming next week um that's about it oh no it's not that's hey. not, it's not about it um they're calling the um the, the they're calling my club or they're renaming it to dream team I see Asim's tweet earlier and it's fucking hilarious. I d that old Sky One TV show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, 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 it honestly sounds like they put Andy in charge of naming it. it yeah, I'd do that. I'd do that. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. Uh. Um, apparently they've made an awful lot of changes. Um, lots of fixes, right. lots of bug fixes. I mean, let's be honest, they would need to. And I hope that they have made the changes that the community have asked for. Um, we've yet to go hands on with it, so we'll probably find out at the same time everybody else does. Um, if it is indeed the improvement that we that we would hope for, then we'll probably put some content out. Otherwise, probably not. Um, right, next bit of news. Um, again, I'm I'm aware that we're we're sort of pushing over the hour at this point. So, um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint is not getting any more content and everybody who bought into those nfts <coughs> has essentially lost their money because they aren't doing anything with them anymore can we Jane. insert the gif for the video of the guy from like the the the, the, the talk show in the foreign country that's just laughing his absolute <laughs> ass off yeah. i oh. oh good lord I mean, yeah, but no, no, because they can be transferred to another game, though. No, you can transfer into another game. No, then that's the point of NFTs. That's no. why they're, they're sold as NFTs. No, <laughs> well, that's why they've sold them as NFTs, no. so you can transfer them to another game. Are you are you saying that Ubisoft just buzzworded people and lied and and got them to to spend lots of money on something that's worthless? I mean, yeah, it's just DLC. Yeah, <laughs> but. I'm stunned and shocked and appalled. <laughs> but also, did you I'm not. see? Did you see the reasoning that they put out for it? Or, or not, sorry, not, not part of that. You are now a part of the game's history. Yeah, Congratulations! Yeah. Well done. The way they put history in that statement, like it was some yeah. sort of like. It's like I think it was the wording was something like you own part of the game and you're part of history. It's like, no, <sighs> no, I'm not having that. But oh, that's dear. that's that's like that's like someone went to the PR department and said, "How can we do this?" without explicitly saying we fucked it <laughs> <laughs> pretty much so i bet um, that's pretty pretty much how it went to be fair yeah i mean so the, it's the, like something out of mythic quest isn't it let's it be is, honest yeah yeah <laughs> i mean so they're not taking the game down they're not you know they're not stopping people playing it but they're not adding anything new so it's essentially just going to die out and mm. <sighs> What a mess. Basically their way of killing it, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Because why would you play it if there's nothing new? So, yeah. Mm. Live services, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Classic. Indeed. It's the services. future. Could you imagine if they did this to Destiny? I'm fairly certain I'll be able to hear Nico scream from what? here. Yeah. I heard it just then. Even you saying it, I'm pretty sure he's the <laughs> his destiny. Yeah, it's like Obi it's like Obi Wan. It's like Obi Wan, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah. Um, but felt a disturbance in the force. Let's end on some good news, um, because I know Andy's excited about this, and I'm excited about this. To be fair, yeah. And Gary 
Are you excited about New Monkey Island? I actually am. I haven't, I, I haven't played a Monkey Island game for, well, I can't actually remember how long ago it was. <laughs> But this was this was one of those sort of uh, news articles where I was like, "Really?" It sort of I didn't expect it. It sort of come out of nowhere. Um, I'll, so yeah. yeah, I'll be honest. I was in the middle of a meeting and I had my iPad in front of me at work. I was on a Zoom call and I had my iPad in front of me, and I was trying to pay attention to the meeting. And then the press email came through. And uh, I just saw the headline of New Monkey Island game launches in 2022. And I'm pretty sure I just visibly went <laughs> on camera in the middle of the meeting. Everyone listening to the audio version, I made a face that looked like Pob. Yes. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know who Pob is, Google Michael Gove. Um... <laughs> no, don't Google Michael Gove. Good Lord. No, Why would you tell I people wouldn't. to do that? <laughs> um, people nightmares. Yeah, I mean, like... Um, the, the the artist uh, behind Little Big Planet has confirmed that he is indeed leading the art design for it. Very nice. Um, okay. And there was a very very brief trailer that it, the game is called Return to Monkey Island, and it mm-hmm. apparently will be out this year, um, being published by Devolver. So slightly bittersweetly, though, it is a direct sequel to Monkey Island Two, which means that they are potentially cutting Curse of Monkey Island out of uh, continuity, which is annoying because I really like Curse of Monkey Island. What mm. if what if it's a bridging story like Ooh. Rogue One? Could be. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Bit of a side story in the same universe. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, always, mm. always fun to get new games yes. announced. Um, so uh, That is hilarious, by the way. I just read like the bottom of that article and it says yeah. that you actually announced it on April the 1st and people thought it was an April Fool's joke. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tweak that, to amazing. be honest. Yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. Um, so, yeah, then, um, yeah, he, he wrote on, uh, on, when was this, Monday? Yeah, he wrote on Monday. Yeah. Uh, I felt bad about the April Fool's joke, so over the weekend I whipped up the game so no one was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there was the Amazing. thing, wasn't there, that Ron Gilbert wouldn't make another Monkey Island game unless he totally owned the rights to it, unless Lucasfilm <laughs> sold him the rights. So they must have done. So Disney, well, Disney have resurrected Lucasfilm games now, haven't they? So yeah, they I mean, it, they are working with Lucasfilm, so maybe it's out, yeah. kind of a maybe it's just a collab that he's he's finally yeah. agreed to the terms on. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, unless it's a licensing thing, maybe possibly maybe they've yeah. allowed him to. Yeah. Potentially so. Um, mm. And there is one more final piece of news that I didn't put on the agenda because it was oh, quite late. Secret in the day. news for me and Gary. There's a new Tomb Raider coming out. Well, there's a new Tomb there's Raider. There's a new Tomb Raider mm. being mentioned. It's in, in development. <laughs> yeah. It's in development and it's using Unreal 5 because a bunch of Unreal 5 stuff came out uh, yeah. this week, including the. Well, basically, Unreal Five engine that got released to yeah. anyone who wants to build a game in it. So, looks tasty. Yeah, I'm I'm really intrigued by this, and hopefully, you know, games can start coming relatively shortly um, to to platforms. Mm. Obviously, I know that's not how it works. Um, you know, we'll probably be waiting think... a while for a, a big game. Isn't Fortnite the first game that's been ported to Unreal Five? Um, I'm pretty sure my youngest was wibbling something about Fortnite now running on Unreal 5 the other day to me. Uh, I don't really so. care about Fortnite, but so Maybe. I'll take it with a pinch of salt. I don't know. But anyway, that is the news. That is what we've been playing. Is there anything else that we need to discuss? Because I don't think there is. I'm still holding a pencil. I think I'm just absent-mindedly. I'm sitting at my desk and all of my work stuff's here, and I think I'm doing what I'm doing in meetings and sitting there with a pencil looking very, very interested. And then flicking your eyes down to your what? iPad and realising there's a new Monkey Island game and nearly shitting yourself. <laughs> I nearly screamed. Is there anything else? Um... I don't think so. I think we've pretty much covered... Yeah. Everything. No fireworks show or anything like that for two hundred. Nothing. No. Should have bought some party poppers. 
<laughs> so that, yeah, this this is a slash was episode two hundred. Um, we're very much aware that it's taken a long time to get to two hundred. It's partly because the podcast stops and starts quite a lot. Um, we mm. are trying to you know to keep it fairly regular. Hopefully, once a week. If not once a week, then we will at least try and do once a fortnight. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you to everybody that's subscribed and is watching or listening to this in you know wherever they they were doing so. Um, get yourself subscribed to YouTube, get yourself uh, on the website at nextgenbase.com and uh, follow us on the socials at nextgenbase and our handles are in our little cam boxes. And um, until then, thank you very much for joining me, Gary. My pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me, Andy. Your pleasure. Ooh. And we will see you guys soon. Bye. You will. Bye. Bye.